Welcome back to another one of my proof series episodes where I show you why certain things happen in mathematics. This episode I'll be showing you why the derivative of arc sine or um, sines to the power uh, inverse sine sine to the power of negative one of x equals one over square root of one minus x squared. Now I wrote these both because they're the same thing. Some people write it as sine to the power of negative one, and some people write it as arc sine, and that's because they're both the same. Okay, so I'll show you why. Okay. So we have start off with our, our function, and that equals sine negative one x. Now, what is that the same as? Well, not the same, but if we re if we rearrange sine onto the other side, it will look like this. Not I'll explain what I mean by rearranging, but like when you when you have sine theta equals a, and you want to find what theta is, you f find that you multiply both sides by the inverse. So all I'm doing here is just um, reversing that process, like any sort of trigonometric when you're graphing and you, you're using triangles and finding angles and whatnot. This step is used all the time. You might not, you might not have done triangles and whatnot before you watch this video, but if you have, this should um, click in your memory because this is uh, because this is this is what you do. You, you sign sine of fx equals x. If you wanted to find what fx was, you'd um, put the inverse of sine on the other side because that's how you get sine from one side to the other. Okay? That's how it works. So that's, I'm just reversing that process. Okay? So, okay, so we have this. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the derivative of this. So we find the derivative of this side and the derivative of that side. The derivative of sine of a function equals cos of that function multiplied by the derivative of that function. Now this is just using the chain rule. If you've watched my videos, you should have done this plenty of times before, but just the chain rule to solve this. And now we're left with this side, the derivative of x is 1. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the cos fx and divide it on either side, which will bring it on this side. So we'll have f dash of x equals 1 over cos fx. Okay? Now, cos of fx, what can we do with that? I'm going to use a spare sheet of paper to show you this. But let's look at trigonometric identity. 1 equals cos squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1. Okay, now this theta, it can be, you don't have to use an angle for this. You don't have to use, it, uh, you don't have to use any, anything like to relate it to triangles or angles or anything. Um, I'm trying to, what I'm trying to say is, as long as these two are the same, like 1, 1, 2, 2, whatever, it'll equal 1. <clears throat> Therefore, we can rewrite it to make it a bit easier to understand. We can chuck whatever we want in the brackets as long as it's the same for both and it'll still equal 1. Okay, now what? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have 1 minus sine squared fx equals cos squared fx. Okay, now this now this is looking a bit familiar to this, except we need a cos fx. We don't need a cos squared fx. So how do we get rid of the squared? Well, we square root both sides. Okay. 
Okay, this is good. We can work with this. Why can we work with this? Well, because we have sine fx equals x, and we have sine squared fx. I'm just showing you what my next what my next couple of steps will be, but that's where I'm heading. Sine squared of fx, and we we have an x. We have what sine fx equals. So we're gonna we're gonna use utilize that. Okay. So I'm gonna write this in. Fx or f dash of x equals one over the square root of one minus sine squared fx. I knew that wasn't going to fit. But yeah, so that's what I've done. There. Get rid of that paper. Okay, so now we've got that. I'm going to show you something that might help you as well. So, if we had sine x equal or equals, that's not what we got. We got, oh my god, if I can think, sine fx we've established equals x from here. Therefore, if we've squared both sides, and if someone is, if you guys aren't following, the, having sine fx squared is the same. This is just a different way of writing it. But sine squared fx equals x squared. Therefore, the sine squared fx we can rewrite as x squared. Okay. f dash x, it's a bad f, but anyway, equals 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. And we've shown that and proven it. And why does sine to the inverse of sine of x or arc sine equal 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared? And we've just proven that there. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. I hope uh, what I was saying got through to you. But on that note, have a good day.